There's one guy in Russia that Vladimir Putin, the president, fears more than anyone else. He wears a lot of different hats. He's a political activist, he's a YouTuber, he's kind of an internet troll. He's a lover of quality drone footage to help expose corruption, which like, come on, who doesn't love a good drone shot? But his main objective is singular. It's very focused. It's to give the Russian people and all of us around the world a peek behind the curtain to show how Russia really works, exposing the web of bribes, corruption, lies, and powerful men who really control modern Russia. This important figure who is seeking to dismantle Russia's web of corruption is named Alexei Navalny. And just last week, he was sentenced to three years in jail, as well as being nominated for a Nobel Peace prize after being secretly poisoned on an airplane. The movement that he has created strikes at the heart of Vladimir Putin's biggest fears, and I want to show you why. So let me introduce you to the man Putin fears the most. Alexei Alexei Alexei, Alexei. Russian opposition leader Alexei, Alexei Navalny. Navalny. Okay, so let's rewind to summer of last year. Alexei Navalny is in a city in Eastern Russia. He's in a hotel room about to head to the airport to catch a flight. When he arrives to the airport, other passengers recognize him because he's kind of a big deal in Russia and they snap some photos with him. Then he gets on the flight. The flight takes off. It's a four hour flight from this city of Tomsk to Moscow where he's going. Everything's going normal for the first 30 minutes of this flight, but then Navalny starts to feel weird. A flight attendant offers him a bottle of water and he refuses, but soon this feeling weird turns into severe pain. He runs to the lavatory looking for some reprieve. He's going in and out of consciousness. He may be going into a seizure. His heart is slowing down. His muscles are convulsing and seizing. No one has any idea what's happening. A nurse aboard steps up and helps keep him conscious while the pilots reroute for an emergency landing at a nearby city in Russia. The plane lands at the closest airport where medics sprint onto the runway to help, only for the medics to say, and I quote, this is not a case for us. He needs intensive care. Navalny is then rushed to a hospital, but what happens inside this hospital is kind of mind blowing. When he gets to the hospital, they start running tests on him to see what's going on. But when the doctors come looking for the results of these blood tests, the lab technician hands them a blood test that says that Alexei Navalny is totally fine. Nothing out of the ordinary, maybe a little bit of irritable bowel issues. But that's not what the doctor is seeing. This man looks like he has been poisoned. But the lab technician didn't hand over any results that indicate that he was poisoned. Something is up. The doctors go ahead and go with their instincts and treat him for poisoning because that is the symptoms that they are seeing. They put him on a ventilator and they put him into a medically induced coma to recover. Over the next few days, Alexei Navalny is in the intensive care unit, in a coma, in this hospital. But the hospital starts to fill up not just with doctors, but Russian government officials who start barring people like his wife and his personal doctor from entering the room. Navalny and his family do not feel safe in this hospital. It's at this time that a German humanitarian nonprofit organization offers to charter a jet to fly him from this town in Russia, out of Russia, to be treated in Berlin. Soon he's on an airplane to Berlin where he arrives at a hospital and they run all of the same poison blood tests that they did in Russia, but this time they find that he was poisoned. This would have come up on the tests they did in Russia, but somebody decided not to reveal that to the doctors. Mr. Navalny remains in an induced coma at a Berlin hospital. The German doctors are seeing that the poison that was somehow administered to Alexei Navalny is some crazy nerve poison that sends the victim into a state of paralysis and gives nerve damage and inducing seizures and making their heart slow down. It's a poison that was developed by Soviet scientists during the Cold War. 
and they used it to quietly attack people they wanted to get rid of, like spies or double agents. It's called Novichok, and it is a brutal poison. And it was the poison that was used on Alexei Navalny. Tonight, this incredible story, the most prominent Russian opposition leader is in a coma on a ventilator. Now, there's a lot of ways to poison someone. You can use ingredients that anyone has access to. Novichok is something that is developed and used only by the Russian military and intelligence. In a sense, it's a signature. So Navalny goes back into a medically induced coma in this hospital in Berlin where doctors are doing their best to treat him and also investigate what happened. Soon, the world would know exactly what happened. Okay, let's just pause for a second while Alexei Navalny is in a coma in Berlin because we need to ask an important question, which is who is this guy and why on earth is Soviet nerve poison being used against him? For most of his adult life, Alexei Navalny has been dedicated to one thing, which is shining a light on how Russia really works behind the scenes. Not this or this, but how it really works. One thing you need to know about Russia is that the whole society, the government, the business structures, everything is built on a giant house of cards, let's say. It's delicate, it's fragile, but it's the status quo. And Putin is at the top. From there, you have the people closest to Putin's, the ones that have his ear. The rich Russian billionaires who control Russia's main industries like oil and gas, mining, telecoms, all the richest guys in Russia. These guys do favors for Putin, and Putin does favors for them in the political sphere. They scratch each other's back, and in doing so, they maintain control over everything that gets done in Russia. And this model repeats itself as it trickles down to regional governments and then to town and city governments who all operate in the same manner, keeping the society stable through a culture of bribery, secrecy, and intimidation. And it all happens in the name of keeping Putin secure in his position so that he can in turn keep his rich friends happy. The reason why Putin fears Alexei Navalny is because Navalny wants all Russians to see exactly how this works, to shine a light on it, which could easily turn the people against the system, to knock down this house of cards from the ground up, to stop putting up with a government that works for the rich corporate owners and not for the people. And if this happens, it's Vladimir Putin who has the longest, hardest fall. Okay, but here's the juiciest part of the story and the part that got me into this and that I love, which is that the tactics Navalny uses to do this shine a light on the system thing, there's no better way to describe it than saying he's full on trolling Vladimir Putin and his friends. He does this in a lot of ways, but what I love the most are his well-produced internet explainer documentaries. He makes these long videos exposing the indulgent corruption of Russian billionaires who control the country. And he uses these visual investigation techniques that are really stunning to look at and really convincing. But there's also a good amount of snarky poking fun in every one of these videos. Like this deep dive into the corruption of this Russian politician that starts with this goofy iPhone video of him awkwardly dancing at like a wedding or something. But it's not just all poking fun. These videos then go very deep and they reveal really useful and compelling evidence that shows just how bad this situation is, just how in bed the government is with these rich billionaires, but always peppered with a good amount of this. He's like a viral internet sensation meets like hardcore journalist, activist, video vlogger guy. I just, he's like just an interesting character. So what is Navalny? He's kind of a politician, but he's more than that. His specific policy agenda has morphed and it's honestly like not that noble. Like he totally supported the annexation of Crimea, which is like totally off limits and a terrible thing that happened. And his electability as a leader isn't very likely, but that's not really at the heart of his mission. His mission isn't about being elected, it's about dismantling the current system. Not to convince people to vote for him, but simply get people to vote against Putin and the status quo. And here's why this scares the shit out of Vladimir Putin. Back to our house of cards. Even though Putin is at the top of this pyramid, it doesn't mean he's all powerful. He's not like a standard totalitarian dictator who just has 
everyone under his thumb. He's only powerful because he's in the good graces of all these super rich guys that own the massive companies of gas, telecoms, mining, and natural resources in Russia. If these guys turn on him, he's over. Putin, while powerful, is simply one cog in the machine of keeping these guys powerful and immune from laws and regulation. Putin isn't afraid that all these YouTube videos are going to create legal issues for Putin and his friends. The courts in Russia are just as influenced by this culture of bribery and intimidation as everything else. He's not afraid of that. Instead, he's afraid that the people might realize that their government is controlled by a bunch of billionaires and start demanding that Russia be more transparent. some accountability for these rich dudes and the leaders that support them. And like I said, if that happens, these billionaires might be able to slip into the shadows and run away to some other country, but Putin will be the public face of the person who's kept this arrangement together. He will be enemy number one. His fall will be the greatest. That is why he's afraid. In a sense, he's painted himself into a corner and he's past the point of no return. He must maintain the current system or he will face the wrath of his people. So far, the only person who has actually garnered that wrath is Alexei Navalny. How corrupt do you think is Mr. Vladimir Putin? He's the basement of this corruption. He's personally involved in corruption and he's encouraging our official for corruption. It's his way of ruling country. Vladimir Putin made his first visit since Russia annexed Crimea. Vladimir Putin casts his shadow across the boundary of Europe and Russia. So Putin goes to greater and greater lengths to ensure that he remains popular among his people and show the billionaires that he's still the right guy to keep this system of corruption going. He does this in a few ways. The first way he keeps popularity among his people is my favorite and it looks like this. He stages these absurd photo ops where he's like surveying the land on a horse with no shirt or playing hockey with a bunch of literal professional hockey players from Russia and he's actually better than all of them and he scores eight goals in the course of this video. It's amazing. And people actually buy this. They like to see their leader like super powerful. And then secondly, he keeps his people happy by actually leading the country in ways people like. His approval rating remains quite high. But more and more, as Putin and this house of cards feels threatened, Putin is resorting to more extreme means to keep this system secure. <laughs> Okay, so we got the backstory on Russia and Alexei Navalny. Let's get back to Berlin, to the hospital, to the ICU where Alexei Navalny is in a coma. He finally comes out of this coma, and by then the world has looked into the details of him being poisoned on this airplane, and it becomes clear that this is the work of Russian government agents who snuck into his hotel and laced his underwear with this lethal nerve poison. Alexei Navalny is the master of trolling and pranking and he immediately responds to this. He downloads some basic call spoofing software that any of us could download and he masks his number as a number coming from an intelligence secure line and he calls an intelligence agent who is has COVID and is like ditched out in his house at seven in the morning, he's like delirious. and. He goes on to pretend that he is a leader in the intelligence agency. He has all this insider information and he teases out a confession from this intelligence agent that indeed they were the ones behind this poisoning. I'm not going to play a bunch of that phone call here, but I'm going to put a link in the description and you need to go listen to it because it is insane to listen to. So what's Navalny's next move? He's in Berlin. He almost got killed. He's now having to learn to walk again because the nerve poison like really effed him up. What does he do? He decides to do exactly what he's always done. Instead of cower and stay abroad, he decides to return to Russia to face Putin head on. 
Upon his return, he releases a documentary that is his most epic documentary yet. He was working on it before he got poisoned. This one focuses entirely on Putin and his network of bribes, cronyism, and loads of amazing drone footage of Putin's lavish palace on the Black Sea. In true Navalny fashion, he makes it clear that he's going to release the film after he returns to Moscow because, in his words, Потому что мы не хотим, чтобы главный герой этого фильма думал о том, что мы его боимся и что я буду рассказывать о его самом страшном секрете, находясь за границей. The documentary becomes one of the most instantly viral videos ever to appear on the YouTube platform. It currently has 110 million views. My favorite part of this doc is when Navalny's team goes to the shores of the Black Sea, they blow up this inflatable boat, and then they get a drone in the air, and they fly over this giant palace on the shores of the Black Sea. And then they do what I love, which is animation on top of drone footage to help expose a crazy story. They start to pick apart every aspect of this palace. They get the original blueprints to show that there's a hockey rink in the basement, there's a full casino, and all of this for the benefit of the president of the country. But of course, it's not owned by the president, it's owned by his buddies. Some rich billionaire dude actually owns it, but who actually benefits from it? Putin. It's like a symbol of the whole Russian system in one drone shot. It's freaking beautiful. No political leader should have a palace like this. Alexei Navalny, who returned to Moscow for the first time since he was poisoned last summer. Navalny lands in Moscow, and what happens? He's immediately arrested. On what charges? Well, they claimed that he was violating parole from some old fake set of charges brought against him years ago that were thrown out later, they were totally fake, and yet the Russian state continued to say that he had to report for parole. Turns out he couldn't report to parole officers because he was in a coma from being poisoned by the Russian government. And yet, he gets arrested. He'd only been back on Russian soil a few minutes when Alexei Navalny was told he was being detained. A kiss goodbye for his wife, Yulia. Russia's justice system has been a sham for a long time. This isn't new, but just how blatant this is, how clearly faked all of this is to silence a threat to the leader, that's a new low for Russia and its justice system. So Navalny is arrested and put on trial. The people take to the streets of Moscow and around the country. The police meet them with force, arresting over a thousand protesters and now arresting journalists. Here's a clip of Navalny's lawyer speaking openly to the media in the middle of Moscow and out of nowhere, a group of policemen come detain her. Just like in broad daylight. While the protesters clash with the police outside the courthouse, Navalny stands in a glass cage. While a largely politically motivated sham trial about parole violation takes place. His wife, Yulia, is in the courtroom, in the audience, watching this all happen. They're making eye contact. And in the end, the system does what it's supposed to do. Navalny gets two years and eight months of prison time. The house of cards stays stable for at least a little longer. This movement was never about Alexei Navalny or his politics, and it likely never will be. He will never be the leader of Russia. His role in all of this is focused on one thing, showing the people how their country really works, ripping away the curtain that veils how their government uses the resources of the people and who it serves and who it doesn't. Doing so threatens the security of Vladimir Putin and his friends, which is why the system is reacting, going to greater and greater lengths to muzzle Navalny and anyone like him. The question for me is, how far will this go? How much is too much before the Russian people decide to take back their country? Thank you for watching this video. It is unfolding right now and by the time you're watching this there may be new information about this i'm putting a bunch of links in the description 
for some of the videos that I mentioned that you should go watch if you want to learn more. I now want to thank today's sponsor, which is a thing I have used forever, which is Audible. Audible is a place that used to just be audiobooks, and that's why I got into it like literally 10 years ago. Now it is a place that has audiobooks, but also tons of other audio, spoken word, just content. What I love about Audible is that you can sign up for the subscription and then basically you can pick out one audiobook, no matter how much it costs, you get it for your subscription fee every month, and you get access to a bunch of other unlimited content podcasts, audiobooks, all sorts of really amazing stuff all on the app. I really love Audible because it gets me learning so much. I will often listen to an audiobook while I'm working on a story so that I can get up to speed on the background of that story and become just more informed about the topics that I'm covering. The audiobook I'm listening to right now, well, I'm listening to a bunch actually, but uh, the one I'm really loving is called Fluent Forever. It is the psychology of language learning. I just did a language learning class on Bright Trip and I'm like deep in the science of language learning. It's an amazing listen. I'm learning a ton. Uh, I also have loads of Italian language audiobooks that I'm listening to. Like I'm listening to Hunger Games in Italian right now. It's really nice learning a bunch. Anyway, because you are watching this before President's Day here in the United States, you are gonna get in on one of the biggest sales of the year that Audible does. You can get a subscription to Audible for $9.95 a month for your first six months. That is insanely cheap. You pay less than $10 a month and you get any audiobook in the entire collection for that subscription fee, plus access to all this unlimited audio content is a crazy good deal and it is a no-brainer for me. So go to audible.com slash Johnny Harris or text Johnny Harris to the phone number 500-500 if that's easier for you and you can get in on this deal. Clicking that link in my description helps support this channel but it also gets you in on this killer deal that you don't want to miss. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. More videos to come. I'll see you in the next one.